What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and today we're going to be reviewing the Ducky 1-3 Mini RGB Keyboard. The very highly anticipated follow-up nearly three years later from the Ducky 1-2 Mini RGB, which really made these 60% keyboards a lot more popular on the keyboard market. So first up, just taking a look at it, this definitely isn't your ordinary keyboard. Ducky went with this bright theme for the Daybreak color version here. That's a real nice deep blue with this muted yellowish green legends and accents, with your main keycaps being this cool grayish bluish Pantone. And while it may not visually fit everyone's desk setup or their aesthetic, it's a breath of fresh air, I think, and looks really unique if you dig these specific colors. Inside the box, you get the typical Ducky goodies plus a little extra, with your black braided USB-C cable, unfortunately not color matched a keycap puller, key switch puller, and 11 extra keycaps with this circular novelty ducky keycap as well. Also, by the way, inside the packaging is always a keyboard cover that 99% of people either just throw out or leave in the box, but legit, it's a worthy cover to keep on your desktop to shield your board from dust or pet hair when not in use. Don't toss this. And just real quick to point out, yes, this is my own braided USB-C cable that I added to it just to fit it visually. The sock one that's black doesn't look the best, so I just threw in this for the extra visual flair here. Now giving our duck some life as we plug in the top left side seated USB-C cable, you'll see the RGB shine nice and bright with vivid colors and effects, making the keyboard pop more than it already does with this unique colorway. It's your typical onboard effects from years past, there's no software for these boards, so all your RGB control and macro recording is all done on the board itself. Could be a pro, could be a con to some, I always favor not having to download extra software onto my PC, so I'm gonna side with the onboard control here. While tedious, yes, function, alt, and T controls all your RGB effects you can cycle between, I always prefer a nice static color on the board like this, especially with the colorway, just picking a nice static color I think is the way to go. But yes, cycle the effects of function, alt, and T, and if you do want to pick a static color from their spectrum, function, alt, and space will bring up the, the rainbow, and you can sort of pick from the available palettes, which is just the easiest route to go here. Checking out its butt, underneath you have two flip out feet on each side, and they are dual feet, so they have different angles and stuff depending on how you want to elevate the backside. And on the bottom left side, you have your cutout for the dip switches, which lets you do things like rearrange the bottom row, or disable the windows keys for like when you're gaming and stuff. And the edges of this keyboard, instead of being rounded or flush with the rest of the frame, have this angular flare to it to accentuate the two-tone body even more, matches the keycaps as well, and just ties it all together visually. One quick note about the extra keycaps inside the box before we move on, the optional arrow cluster is now on the bottom right side, closer to the right function key, if you want to use those actual uh, arrow keys instead. And in terms of the novelty escape keys, again, super nice to see we have a few options, but I just can't for the life of me bring myself to actually like that circular one. Just really breaks up the board and sticks out. That's just me. Before the keycaps here, they were a two-toned PBT set. You can see the double shot injection and the mold here is very, very tight. It actually took me a, a little bit of extra force to actually take these off the switches, but definitely good quality, nice feel to them with the slight matte texture to it. And again, since it's a 60% layout, one thing I always have to reiterate to people who may be new to keyboards in general is that you still have access to other functions and keys that you're missing out on since we have the smaller layout here. You'll see on the front side printed, we have the functions for things like volume, playback, RGB control. So just because we don't have the physical space, those functions are still here. Now, where it gets exciting with one of the relatively new features to these Ducky keyboards is with under the keycaps. First off, I'll just say that in this unit, I have cherry clear switches, which are tactile, but hella scratchy. Like they are so, so bad. They're a bit heavier at 65 grams, but they also sell the board with cherry black, brown, blue, red, silent red, silver, and these clear switches available. All the housings to the switches are with the crystal tops, which allows the RGB to shine through nice and bright as it bounces off the white coated aluminum plate. Now I say all that to tell you, despite these sandy ass switches, the saving grace and the main feature to these new releases is the fact they're hot swap. So at any given time with the included key switch puller, you can quickly and easily pop these out of the PCB and replace them with literally any other option that would be better than these cherry clears. Hot swap PCBs have been around for a few years now, they're not new, but other than Ducky Zero the Rat Keyboard, this is the first mainstream release from them that we actually have this option, which is long overdue, but better late than never. 
The PCB is a north facing 5 pin, but with it being north facing there could be some keycap interference when using other cherry profile keycaps. On these north facing switches, keycaps can hit the tops of the switches which would prevent it from proper bottoming out, whereas that does not happen on south facing PCBs. But I will admit here that I doubt it's going to be much of an issue since these keycaps already color matched to the board to fit the theme, so I don't think people are going to be buying this keyboard and switching out keycaps necessarily. Another thing I'll point out that's pretty common with these white plates is you'll pretty easily scuff off the top and bottom of the cutout when you're moving your switches with the polar. Just due to the metal on metal contact, it'll scratch the plate very easily, but it's hidden underneath the switch and the keycap as it is, so it won't be visible during use. Now for the stabilizers inside, Ducky's using their own V2 plate mount stabs that have this yellow orange stem, and they do apply a very light factory lube on the bar to help eliminate like ping and rattle. I would still recommend adding a little bit more because it is a very, very light lube. Still, it's good to see we at least have some for people who don't want to actually go that next step and mod their keyboard. But speaking of which, let's crack this open. Doing so is extremely easy. There's just four screws holding down the top plate, which I think is the least amount of screws I've ever seen in a keyboard. Modding the Razer Huntsman Mini had like 12 screws. The GMMK Pro has near 20. This, just four. So once they're removed, you can pop out the PCB, and you'll see underneath installed is a thin layer of sound dampening foam. And again, in case you're new to keyboards, this helps cut down on any high-pitched resonance under the PCB from when you're typing or gaming. This will just help absorb that since our case is all plastic. It'll also help absorb that plasticky hollow sound. But taking a closer look at our PCB, I really like how Ducky color matched their Kale Hosfop sockets underneath. This will literally never be visible during regular use, but as a big aesthetic guy myself, I can definitely appreciate that extra effort here. Now, what I'm most impressed by is the inclusion of the sandwich layer. So between our PCB and the plate, we have a nice, yet again, color matching silicone dampener. Yes, it's silicone, not foam. Having this sandwich between the layers is gonna give your switch another factor just of improving the sound profile. And silicone is naturally more dense than foam. It's also nice and thick at 3.5 millimeters. This is definitely gonna help with acoustics overall, giving it just a more deepened sound profile. Now, I'm sorry to do this to you, but we're gonna do the sound test with these cherry clear switches. Yeah, these cherry clears are just horrible. And you probably heard a pretty decent audible amount of pinging, but that's not from the board, that's from the switches. So imagine if you had an actual, you know, decent switch in here, it would sound so, so much better. In fact, just real quick side by side, I'm gonna let you hear a proper, nice, smooth tactile switch versus these cherry clear tactiles, which are bleh. So yeah, literally night and day. If you put some proper nice switches in this keyboard, it'll feel and sound so much better than these cherry clears. Um, and it'll also definitely be helped out even more by the silicone dampener as well as the foam dampener inside. It's just not doing these switches justice. But again, thank God it's hot swap. Uh, stabilizers also felt pretty good. Not the best, but definitely better than most stabilizers out there. And again, they are lightly factory lubed so that's good to see. Well, here, you know. So, during gaming with this, I've had no issues. You know, no input lag or latency. I know on the one too Mini, it had like 23 milliseconds of input lag. I never noticed it, it never bothered me or it never, you know, interfered with my gameplay. I didn't notice any issues here. 
felt fine, no problems at all. And for a pre-built, you know, pre-made 60% keyboard, this just stomps all over other gaming keyboards out there from HyperX, Razer, Corsair. This is pretty much right now the king of pre-built 60% keyboards. The one thing that really bothers me, not necessarily bothers me, but I would have loved to have seen changed and different is the case. With it being all plastic, it is super, super lightweight at just 146 grams. And for a really nice board like this, I just don't like the choice of going plastic. So that does mean I'm probably gonna have to hold out for hopes of them releasing a Ducky 1.3 Mecha Mini with the all aluminum metal case to it. Again, not a massive deal. It's just, it's just not doing the board justice with it being all plastic. But recapping some of the highlights real quick, finally the saving grace is that it's hot swap. Ditch cherry and put in literally any other switch and you'll have a great keyboard. You have a nice and very unique color theme, stock sound dampening foam, and that silicone dampener. For cons, like I just said, I wish the board was metal instead of plastic. Cherry switches are booty, but again, not really too much of a con because you could swap them out, like I said. And one thing I will point out is I know this bluish and yellow colorway isn't gonna be for everybody. So I wonder if they're gonna make a black and white version, which will be more universal on most desk setups. Uh, but good news for those out there who may not be in love with this is they have a ton of options in different colorways as well. We have the Daybreak, they have an all yellow version, a matcha version, and a Fiji colorway. And also you can get it in 60, 65%, TKL, and full size. So you really have the full offering, four different colorways, and really depending on what you're looking for, they have an option for you, which is really good. Prices are also gonna vary depending on the size of your keyboard that you get and what switch you get. This one I believe was 120, which again, given the current market out there, comparing the prices to HyperX, Razer, Corsair, and the likes of the other pre-built gaming companies, 120 is on the relatively lower end, and I would pick this over all those any day of the week. So finally, three years later, the Tucky 1.3 Mini coming in, giving us the more popular, you know, highly requested features with Hot Swap and it being helped out, silicone and foam dampener. So love what they're doing. Definitely one of the highlights of the year so far. And only time will tell if they give us a black and white version or just a more, you know, universal colorway down the line. But all thumbs up from me, definitely, definitely recommend it. And guys, that'll wrap it up. Hope you liked my review of the Ducky 1.3 Mini RGB. If you did, give this video a big thumbs up to show your support. Feel free to follow me on Twitter, at RandomFrankP. And lastly, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Hope you enjoyed. Have a good day.